So I'm going to start with a quote, a borrowed quote. Uh, cultural activity is very often a part of our daily lives, but when it is consciously given a shape, it succeeds in spreading those aspects of ourselves that truly as, and essentially characterize us as a community and as a nation. Sharing, sensitivity, and respect for our own culture and those of others forms the core of cultural diplomacy. So I want to share these dresses that I found online. We are missing uh, a lot of ladies in here. Um, and I found this and I thought they looked nice. I don't know if anyone doesn't think so, right? So um, I, I found this and I, I thought they looked nice. So I'm going to tell you a story. I have two stories to tell today. Um, in February of 2017, I visited my younger sister in Accra, Ghana. She's married to a Ghanaian man, specifically from the Ewe tribe of the Volta region. This visit coincided with the wedding of a relative of his. On the day of the wedding, as the family prepared themselves to go out to the wedding, I also got myself ready. I finally stepped out into the front porch where my brother-in-law's family and a few friends had gathered to chat as they waited to set off. I suddenly felt uncomfortable. Everyone was looking at me, and not in a pleasantly approving way. Problem is, I was absolutely sure I looked stunning. I had heard those comments before the last time I wore that same dress. As I wondered what the problem was, I felt someone yank me from behind, pulling me sharply back into the house as if, yeah, pulling me sharply back into the house. It was at that moment dragging me back into the guest room in an attempt to rescue me that my sister explained the significance of the colors that I was wearing. The dress I was wearing was red and black. It's much like these samples that I've shown you. <laughs> um, I was a little embarrassed, but I pulled through the day. Well, I obviously changed the outfit. <laughs> so I pulled through the day believing that, you know, the Ghanaians were gracious enough to acknowledge the earlier incident as an honest mistake. Culturally, across Ghana, the combination of red and black colors are worn during funerals, specifically on the burial date. And I say specifically on the burial date because um, the funeral is, a, you know, it takes place through a couple of days. It's not just a one day affair. Those are dynamics for another day. So see, even if this was an honest mistake, um, it would have been very offensive to someone else, more especially to the couple, giving them the perception that I wished, what I wished for them was doom. It is important to note that in many African um, cultures or countries, there's a lot of superstition beliefs. So I'm going to use another uh, borrowed quote. It says, cultures are underground rivers that run through our lives and relationships, giving us messages that shape our perceptions, attributions, judgments, and ideas of self and other. Basically, cultural diplomacy is what we, we practice in order to build these relations from one country to the other. Um, the purpose is for a foreign nation to be able to, you know, to understand their, uh, the, the, the nation's ideals and what they stand for so that they can help in, in building the economic and political goals of that nation. Our social nature as human beings 
is that fundamental tool that connects us to make the attainment of these goals possible. We experience social interactions through exchanges, uh, and exchanges, sorry, through culture, um, music, art, like Romina was talking about the other day. Today we experienced, there's dance, today we experienced uh, food as well from Ethiopian culture. And these are the things of uh, cultural constituent uh, that create friendships and relationships, which in us enact a form of dip uh, cultural diplomacy. So I found myself asking these questions, and especially based, bearing my, my experience uh, back in Accra. Um, what do we know about the communities, the nations that we visit? Where can we find this information before we visit? Is it important at all to learn these things about a community that we intend to visit? My experience in Accra came at a time when I was grappling with a research topic. And it then instilled in me an interest to research on color. Right. So color is actually a part of cultural identity, as I've come to learn. It starts from a national context at the principal symbol of identity, which is a flag. Um, the flag is usually represented by different colors, and these colors will denote different meanings uh, that are f of things within that particular uh, society. So there is a color object association uh, we see um, in determining what colors then would be best representative for a country, for a nation. For our country, uh, Kenya, so that premise, I, I wrote that down there, and I don't want to bore you with you know, the ecological violence theory, but that's really the premise, that um, human response to color, or the effective response to color, is, is it corresponds to their effective response to objects of a corresponding color. So in Kenya, for example, we have black, red, black, white, red, and green. Black stands for the people of the Republic of Kenya, uh, basically an intimation of the skin color of the people. And red is the blood that was shed during the fight for independence. Green is a symbol of the fertility of the nation, um, the great agriculture, horticulture, that it was best known for, import, for exporting. White is a symbol of peace and honesty. On the other hand, Ghana has red, gold, green, and black as the national symbols. I, I looked at these two countries uh, be, because of my experience and, and also because of where I come from. I'm, I'm from Kenya. So based on my experience in Ghana and, and my nationality in Kenya, red is the blood of those we, who died in the struggle for independence, so much like Kenya. It has the same meaning. Gold, the mineral wealth of the country. Ghana is the second largest uh, after South Africa, second largest country in Africa with the largest gold reserves. Um, green is symbolic of the country's rich forests, and black is a symbol of African emancipation from, from slavery. So I shared earlier, drawing from a cultural or a traditional context, my story about Ghana. I want to share with you a little bit about a community in Kenya. And I pick this because the Maasai community is the most representative and globally identified community in Kenya. There are other tribes, 
but because of the cultural richness, I pick this because I know that anyone who visits Kenya um, quickly is quickly, especially if you're on safari, you're quickly able to identify with the Maasai community. So it is one of the 42 plus tribes in Kenya. They are found in Kenya and also in parts of Tanzania and are known to be fierce warriors. Sorry. The community um, is dominated by the color red, which represents the cow's blood, a very critical part of their nutrition where they are said to draw their power and strength from. Now, the Maasai are nomadic, uh, and they are an ailotic group, which they keep large herds of cattle. That's their source of you know, livelihood. They, their land is not fertile, you know, agriculture-wise, but they have vast uh, wealth from animals. So while on safari in Maasai Mara, I, ask, I asked one middle-aged Maasai man as he offered to give us a tour of his manyata, which is the Maasai traditional heart. What are the benefits of drinking blood? He very quickly jumps in to have correct my question, indicating that it has to be raw, warm blood, just drawn from a live cow without leaving it to settle. Often drunk with cow milk, the reason, he states, is that it gives them strength. He goes on to say that once he takes that blood, he can stay a whole week without feeling hungry. I'm tempted to not entirely believe him, <laughs> But I realize that in a region that is dry and infested with drought, indicative of no sufficient food supply, this must be the way to survive. So other fun facts about the Maasai is, yes, other than the fact that they are dominated by the color red, and it is a, um, you know, a symbol associated with the cow's blood, um, they, their clothes obviously are, are <clears throat> the ones they're seen wearing clothes that are red in color, mostly. Uh, there are other colors also seen to be used in the different prints <clears throat> of this cloth that they call the shuka, which are most likely representations of other elements of the Maasai culture. <clears throat> Excuse me. So this Maasai commonly known, this uh, commonly known Maasai shuka has become a trademark of the Maasai community. And if you were to come to Kenya, one of the things you buy from the Maasai market in, in, in Nairobi would be one of these shukas. Um, they wear it with utmost pride, affectionately expressing the significance it has to their most valuable possession, their cattle. So looking at that, we can see that these are two different communities um, whose effective response to the color red seems to differ based on their color object or color subject associations. This next picture gives us the two groups. We can see a um, funeral event in Ghana on my left. On your right, is that on you? Oh, on your left, <laughs> on my right. And then we can see the Maasai community in Kenya in their element. They are, you know, doing what they do best. Um, what we find, however, is color does not exist in a vacuum. Different colors would carry different meanings. Um, we've looked at the Maasai, we've looked from Kenya, we've looked at Ghana, but I just want us to look at a, a few other countries which um, also have color, color representations in different uh, ways. So 
this is how you can see colors carrying different meanings across different cultures. Whereas red symbolizes good luck in China, Denmark, and Argentina, it means bad luck in Germany, Nigeria, and Chad. I didn't say that. <laughs> I picked that from my studies. So if I'm wrong, please forgive me. Um, in USA and Australia and New Zealand, white is a color symbolic of happiness and purity, but it symbolizes death in East Asia. Green is seen to represent envy in Belgium and USA, while in Malaysia it represents danger or disease. So we're saying color cannot exist in a vacuum. Context is a very crucial ingredient for the effective communication of color. I bring in the idea of communication because I find that it is a very important also ingredient in cultural diplomacy. We have to relate through communication. In different contexts, color can have different associations. And in some cases, it unites us through universal codes. A good example and one very straightforward one is traffic. Across the world, we know that green says go, red says stop or wait. Um, in the context of one's country, the same colors may be perceived differently based on how the people are socialized. In different relational settings, I'll use the color red because that's what I've used there before. Red may, be, may either be perceived negatively to mean danger and mistakes in achievement settings, or it will, might be associated with romance in a social context to create a more positive perception. So I did a little exercise where I, I used 200 respondents from Ghana and Kenya to answer some questions for me. And I did this in order to just try and explore the similarities in the perception of color across those two regions. So this study had 200 respondents, um, and, and, I, and I used color's perception questions based on the emotional and social context that similarly affect all the participants. There was no equal representation in the number of respondents across the two countries. So Kenya had more respondents um, than, than Ghana. Uh, but we also had respondents from Zambia, South Africa, Nigeria, which, it, which made it difficult for me to do two separate um, two ana you know, analysis. Um, the ratio of male to female respondents was 50 0.7% for the male, 49.3% for the, for the female respondents, which was well equally balanced, so I was good to go with that. The respondents aged between 18 to 60 years, and, but a majority were like between 31 and 40 years. Um, so these are the findings that um, I think I forgot to place some charts in there, but not to worry. These are the findings uh, that came out across the graph. So for Joy, the question was simple. Which color best defines or best describes this emotion for you, or this content, you know, um, setting for you? So for Joy, there was a 46% uh, respondents felt like yellow best represented that and f followed closely by orange. And for me, I looked at that as the sun. Um, then there was sadness, which also uh, had respondents having a very high concordance of 60.4%, uh, you know, saying that black is the color that defines sadness. And anger, 79.8% was quite significant for me. Um, so again, that is some form of clarity in a way presented there. And fear, fear was a bit divided between black and red, and then gray and, you know, sp spread across other colors like purple, green, yellow. 
So that one was, is, is still something that I felt I needed to explore further. Power and leadership also had those variations. Red and blue came out uh, almost very similarly, and purple. Personally, I always associated purple with power. I somehow was socialized to believe that. But then these results gave me this. Um, again, that just goes to show those different, different uh, variations, uh, but maybe that need to be explored further. So this is a phenomenon that is not too obvious to everyone. Everyone perceives it the way they want to perceive it, based on maybe the way they're socialized. Then for fertility, again, this was a very um, straightforward almost one, with 60% saying green best represented that. Then we've got disgust. Again, this is one of those phenomenons that was not very um, straightforward, and everyone perceived it differently with green, brown, and yellow, you know, sort of playing uh, around the margins. Victory, again, victory had blue and white and then gold um, and other colors uh, going across the division. So I, this is an, a small exercise that just wanted me to understand what are the similarities in the perception of colors across them. What are those colors that you know we can all say, okay, green represents this, red represents this, and everyone feels the same way about it. Of course, this is a bit biased uh, because it's, it's sort of an African context. Uh, although I decided to pick a country from West Africa and one from Eastern Africa, this is subject to exploration. I would like to do similar um, a similar uh, studies in, in other regions, even just even if it meant outside of Africa, just to see whether there are those similarities. All right. So anyway, my conclusion is that our responses to color will vary based on different dynamics and how we are socialized as a people. Color can be used more effectively in communication when we understand these issues. The meaning and effects of color have to be based on context, and they cannot stand in a vacuum. A context must be established to ensure effective communication to the audience and the appropriate effective response from the audience. Context can help in providing a universal color code where no words exist to describe. My recommendation, I started by asking, do we know where we can find information about a country's uh, you know, cultural aspects or what the things that are important for a country? Color is an important tool in conveying information, yes. And different colors will spike different feelings on people. Um, it is important to then give accurate color representations to, to subjects whenever we are communicating. Understanding the cultural aspects of a community is very important. Um, For, for effective communication, of course. So how can this need be met by providing information about your country, my country, that is easily accessible by potential visitors? And this information, a lot of us, when we want to travel, apart from looking for where, how can I get my visa, What's the weather like on the other side? Some of the important things we want to find is the cultural aspects of the community where we're going to. Our first point uh, of visit is the embassy's um, websites and the consulates. And I feel that such information 
apart from geographical information and visa information and and history and that it would it would be important to include some important cultural elements of us a community that will help us to blend in um, comfortably within that society um, Communication is essential in building relationships. And the first law in communication is to attract attention. Um, audience association with color plays a major role in the perception of objects, and it increases viewer attention, which leads communi communication effectiveness. But if I have attracted you in the wrong way, if I came to you in colors that are offensive or in something that is offensive to your community, I will not have attracted you in a positive way. Uh, and therefore, you may not want to listen. So that will break down the communication. So it's important to know um, about other people's communities. Especially now, in a world where we try to forge peace and security, it is important. So remember that different people perceive things differently. So do different countries. Let us learn from each other. Let us tell each other. Let us use the diplomacy tools that we have within our reach to communicate this. Thank you. <laughs>